Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are gonna work on a fun project today. It is super easy, I assure you, you can do this. It's whitewashing. It doesn't require a lot of product or a lot of skill. Not to say that you don't have skill, but if you don't, you don't need it. This is super duper simple. So I'm gonna show you guys today on a practice board. I already have a practice board that has been painted up um, in a solid color, and we're gonna go ahead today and whitewash it and give it that softer look. So there's kind of two reasons why you would whitewash something. One is the obvious, right? You like the look. You want, you're going for that coastal vibe. You can even achieve that farmhouse look with a whitewash. And so you just like that look. The other reason you may want to use the whitewash technique is because you've painted a piece. It's too bold, too bright. There's just, you want to kind of tone it down a little bit. So whitewashing is a great way to do that because all you're doing is adding a very subtle wash to it. Now you can go heavier if that's the look you're going for um, and you can go as light as you want to. So it kind of has a look that you can develop depending on what you're looking for. But I have a dresser right now that I'm working on and I painted it in Fusion's Ingle Nook, which is kind of a springy green. It's kind of a cross between like a mint and a, a blue and it just when i walked by it i kept thinking something just didn't look like i wanted it to look i wasn't going for any certain coastal vibe or rustic vibe it just i don't know so i walked by it a few times and thought oh you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna whitewash so i started slowly in one section and absolutely love it it softened it up a little bit i think what it was is the color was just too in your face even though it was a lighter color I just felt like I needed to do something to it. So whitewashing it has created this really soft, subtle look that has toned the entire piece down and it's coming out phenomenally. So that's another reason why you would want to whitewash. So I'm gonna go ahead and tip the camera down and we'll get started and I will show you firsthand how simple this is. You don't need a lot of product for it and it is really easy and it's fun. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here is everything that we need. We have our pre-painted that I did yesterday, practice board. We have a um, sanding pad, which this is the Annie Sloan Medium. I have a ton of these, so I just use them, but if you use a 220 grit generic sanding pad, you are fine. And then I pre-mixed my uh, whitewash, and obviously I was using this yesterday on my dresser, so I just wrapped it up so that it would be left over and good for today. So you need to paint, which we have, and then you need water, so, and a brush, obviously. Today we're gonna use the Klingon F30, which I expanded my Klingon line. I have a couple of the F50s, which are the large paddle brushes I always use in all my videos, and I went ahead and got some of these smaller ones, and I, of course I love them. They're awesome brushes, so this is the F30. I choose to use a smaller brush for my whitewashing because it helps me control better how much of it I'm going to put on. And so, yeah, i just going to go with that one. So how do you go ahead and mix a, a wash? So basically, it's up to you how heavy you want it. However, what I mixed for myself was I did about 75% water, 25% paint. And that seems so thin, but that's the idea. Okay, if you want a heavier um, look of the whitewash, then you could do a 50-50. So it's kind of up to you how thin you want that. I really, really, really wanted a very subtle look. So I went for a 75-25. I will list this in the comment section below so that you guys know, but just keep in mind, you can mix however you want and you can try it. Out. What I would suggest you doing before you put it on a piece is have some sort of a sample to work with. So if you're gonna whitewash a dresser or a table or whatever, just work with a sample so that you can kind of test and measure your, your mixture of your whitewash, okay? So again, if there's no exact formula, you can go as heavy or as light as you want to. And yeah, so basically the only other thing that I didn't grab was that you are going to need is a paper towel. So hold just one second and I will grab a paper towel and be right back. All right, so I have my paper towel now too. The reason why you want a paper towel is even though you're working with a very watered down formula, you probably want to, I always do, I wipe off. So after I dip in my wash, and I go ahead and wipe it off. Now look, that's all I've got on there. 
I go ahead and just do a quick wipe on my paper towel and then I go ahead and voila, I start. And see, I mean, that's a 75-25 mixture, you guys, and that's quite a lot of color. So all I'm doing is taking it, and you guys can tell, obviously, I mean, a lot it goes a long way, a little goes a long way, I mean. And I'm going from one end to the next. You can go back the other direction if you want to cover it heavier. My suggestion is when you're doing this look, go as long of a stroke as you can. Go from start to finish. You don't want that stop and start mark in the middle. And so you want to take it as long of a stroke as you can. Now that's easier said than done when you're working on a large piece. So I've taught you guys this before in my other videos. When you have to come up in the middle or three quarters of the way through, what you're going to do is take your brush and you're going to go ahead and lift off. And it's kind of a flick of the wrist. That will alleviate that stop and start mark and I'll show you guys here. Okay, so look, I don't have a stop and start mark there because I went ahead and lifted and I kind of just flicked the end of that brush off of the piece. So that will create that um, nice flow and you won't have those start and stop marks because those are hard even if you were sanding afterwards to get those out. So again, let me show you, you're gonna go like this and you're gonna lift off, okay? Super, super easy. So for camera purposes, I'm gonna go a little heavier because sometimes you don't see it as much on camera as you do in person, but look at how quick and simple and easy that is, okay? Now, if you have any brush strokes or any heavy areas that you aren't liking, then you can alter that by sanding that down, and that's what I'm gonna show you, which will be the next step, but the one piece that I just got done doing, I went a little lighter than this, but again, you can go as light or as heavy as you want. And I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna zoom in here so you guys can really see how nicely that goes on. Just adds a little bit. This is that color I was telling you about, Ingle Nook. It is kind of a minty bluish green. It's a perfect color for whitewashing. Um, whitewashing really tends to go with the lighter, more neutral colors. Um, I have never washed, whitewashed a black or like a navy piece. That might be interesting to try sometime, but I always kind of do it because it looks more natural with the lighter colors. So we're going to go ahead and let that dry, and then we will come back. And when we come back, we will show you how to sand it and then what the final step is. So can you see how easy this is going? All right, guys, it is dry. Let me tell you something, whitewashing does not take long to dry. So, because you're basically just giving it such a dry brush effect, and I wanted to talk about that just a moment. The, the stroke, the pressure is incredibly light, right? You're literally like dusting it on like a, with a feather. That's how light your pressure should be. So let me go ahead and zoom in on this and show you guys how that looks. So see, it looks really nice. We haven't even sanded it yet. Once we sand it, it kind of starts to melt together a little bit and it'll create a little bit of a softer look. So let's go ahead and do that. So all I'm gonna do, super simple, I would say light to medium pressure, take your sanding pad and literally just go back and forth. Now, if you feel like it's not blending as much as you want, apply more pressure. So I went really heavy in some areas here, and so I'm going to go ahead and apply a little more pressure, and I'm just going to keep working that same area until I achieve the look that I want. And here's the other tip. If you apply too much and you are not seeing the difference you want to see with sanding it back, guess what you can do? Go get your base color, dry brush your base color on to go ahead and start to add more of that base darker color back in. It's as easy as that. But let's go ahead and not sand the piece right off of the workbench. All right, so I'm gonna take the other side of my paper towel and just wipe this off and show you guys that up close. That is super pretty. Now, 
once you sand the final like I just did, right, because we've got our base coat on, has a top coat built into it, we went ahead and dry brushed some paint and water on there. But now we kind of have, we've sanded it, right, so it's kind of got that scuffed, dry look. Um, not that you, if you don't want to, you don't have to, but I prefer to seal this um, because it kind of will just continue to add that durability to the paint and it'll also kind of deepen it up a little bit. So I am gonna go ahead and seal this. I'm gonna put on um, Fusion's wax, their clear wax, just to give it a little extra added sheen um, and more of a top coat to it. So I will show you that in just a minute what the difference, what that looks like. Okay guys, so this is the piece. Now I have not put the wax on it yet. I just wanna show you. This is the piece all done and ready and you see how our um, whitewash is extremely subtle. I'm gonna get really close in so you guys can see how it looks. And now I'm gonna go ahead and apply my Fusion Clear Wax. I use these um, cloths from Wipeball. I get a huge box of them, I think like 150 or something. They're great for waxing, they're very soft. So basically, all I'm gonna do is take my wax and just give a light coat. Now typically, whenever you put a final seal on, whether it's a poly or a wax, you definitely wanna wait ample amount of time before you do so. Um, you've gotta let that paint settle and set up. Now, this paint, the base coat has been on since yesterday, and then doing the whitewash um, a couple of hours ago, I did wait a few hours between takes to go ahead and apply my wax. Because it's a whitewash and not an entirely full, thick, full coat of paint, you're probably fine to go ahead a few hours later um, and wax or seal. You're not gonna move around that paint at all. The whitewash is so incredibly light. So I've gone ahead and put my wax on. I'm gonna take my clean cloth. I just cut these in half when I do it because not to waste. And then I just kind of buff it in. All this is doing is adding extra protection and durability to the piece. And it's also giving it a little bit, um, it'll deepen the color back up a little bit because obviously when you use a sanding pad, you know, you're kind of knocking down any of the sheen or shine that's on there. And it looks a little bit rough, if you will. I, I don't think it looks rough, I think it looks dry. Right now I'm just kind of buffing it because I want it to have a nice sheen. So you can use medium pressure and buff that off. So that is our final piece. I will go ahead and show you guys up close from a different angle so you can get a really good peek. But yeah, that's how easy whitewashing is. And it's really fun. It adds just kind of a soft effect. Um, and I really love it. So yeah. Okay guys, so that's it. We are at the end of the video. This was a really quick and short tutorial on how to do whitewashing. And hopefully it was uh, helpful to you. Let me show you the final piece. This is our board and it is completely whitewashed, cleared, and ready to go. So, and you can see that wax provides, it puts back in that really nice sheen and gives it, you know, just that little bit that it needs after the sanding. So, I will feature a um, still of this at the end of the video so you guys can see really up close how it looks, but it's a really fun technique. It's a really easy technique as you know, the products that you use are not much, right? So I'll list it down below what I used it, but basically water, a white paint, and you can even go like off-white. If you don't want the bright white, you can go off-white. So that's just a, a choice. But um, water, white paint, a paintbrush, and a 220 grit sanding pad, and you are ready to go. And it is the easiest thing to do. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys today. Thank you so much for being subscribers. I so appreciate it. And keep subscribing so you can continue to get all my videos and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you so much.